first, some holiday travel headaches as millions of Americans hit the road and the skies this Labor Day weekend. In California, progressive politics are turning those headaches into migraines. Just days after the state banned gas cars by 2035, the state is telling electric vehicle owners not to charge up because of the heat wave. So just to be clear, don't charge the electric vehicles. They are pushing everyone to buy because their electric grid can't handle it. And at airports across the country, pilots are picketing the country's largest airlines, demanding a solution to the ongoing staffing shortage. Right now, there are more than 13,000 flight delays and nearly 2,500 cancellations. So, guys, I mean, you can only imagine what a real headache, a migraine that is for people, travelers, families across the nation who have had their flight plans interrupted, not only for the travelers, but the families waiting to receive them, right? So this is just going on and on and on, these problems, delays, cancellations, staffing shortages. And how about what's going on in California? Uh, the electric grid is really taking a testing. You know, 14 percent of the grid there is powered by solar power. And it seems not to be holding up so well. <laughs> Guy, uh, what are the political implications here for Gavin Newsom? Well, you juxtapose the two headlines. What they just passed, this requirement by 2035, no more cars powered by fuel. And then literally, I think it was six days later, they put out the edict, actually, please don't charge your electric right. vehicles, which we're pushing it's you towards. I know that we're all paid to make points here. Sometimes the point makes itself. Mm -hmm. This point makes itself. The one other thing I would add is when you look at some of the other things that they're telling Californians to do and not to do to try to keep the, you know, the electrical grid running, they're saying to set your thermostat at 78 to 80 degrees. Tommy, we were chatting before the show. You're always a little chilly. I'm always a little warm. 78 to 80 and trying to sleep is a nightmare. Welcome to California. Progress. Can you smell the progress? Yeah, we have a graphic on, on, on these uh, asks by state officials in California. Let's go ahead and put that up. So this has been put out by the uh, independent system operator of California. This is the entity that manages the electrical grid out there. So as Guy said, they're asking people from 4 p.m. to 9 p.m. when the demand is greatest on the grid to please set your thermostat to 78 degrees. Try sleeping at 78 degrees, right? Refrain from using large appliances and refrain from charging that electric car they really want you to get. Tommy. I lived in California for a number of years, so this is not new. Flex alerts happen in California all the time. Yeah. But let's keep in mind, this is supposedly the fifth largest economy of the third world yeah. is what it sure would seem like. People are paying an arm and a leg to live in California. It is unaffordable for most middle-class Americans, but then even when you pay to live there, you pay the taxes, you deal with the regulations, you deal with the liberals, you deal with the virtue signaling, and now you have to sleep in 78 to 80 degrees. You can't charge that electric vehicle they wanted you to buy. They're going to now force you to buy by a certain time. People are paying way too much. They're getting far too little. And what boggles my mind the most about all of this is that they keep voting for Democrats. They keep voting for Democrats that are causing these problems. But another point that we were discussing earlier is they also want people to take public transportation. You know, that will help ease some of the stress with these electric vehicles and everything else. Well, if anybody's been on public transit in the L.A. area recently or in the last 10 years, you know that's not necessarily a safe place to be. You're next to the drug addicts, the tweakers, people that are half clothed. If that, it's not a safe environment. California, you get what you vote for. Yeah, and people are very reluctant to give up their cars in California. A lot of people just don't want to take public transportation. <laughs> so, uh, David, you uh, used to host a show on Fox Nation called Reality Check, yeah. right? <laughs> so what is the reality check here for California as you look at this picture and then you also look at the governor who, you know, I think he wants to run for president one day. You can just see the campaign commercials, right? Right. He wants to follow the success of the current transportation secretary, Pete Buttigieg when he ran for president. Just replay everything Tommy just said. Now add another component to this. When it comes to public transportation, remember, it's not just private cars. These vehicles are going to be transitioned if they have their way. How are they going to keep that much power demand to drive a bus or tandem buses going on a regular basis in a 24-hour need like a Los Angeles, San Francisco, a lot, of, a lot of San Diego and other areas as well? Then go further inland. Go into Mendocino Valley. Go into areas like Fresno. This isn't the Netherlands where you have wind patterns that can drive 
drive windmills as they do over there. California doesn't have that. And when you put aside the NIMBY principle where they don't want them off the coast so the rich elites in Malibu and, you know, Gavin Newsom's relatives can see them, maybe the ones that don't live in Florida, but that's a story for another time. Uh, the fact is they can't support this. When you look at energy and take Elon Musk's latest statement that to have a sustainable world, it will, uh, to paraphrase, it will fall under its own weight without oil and gas. That is simply fact. And you need oil and gas to make parts for those electric cars, mm -hmm. fossil fuels and all the components of petroleum, the rubber, the, the, the various sealants, the various lubricants. Think of everything that goes into it, along with the rare earth minerals, which you get when you do <laughs> extraction of fossil fuels. I mean, this is this is not insane. This is beyond stupid. And by the way, Tommy, when you said uh, fifth largest third world economy. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. I, I will take some credit on that one. I've been working on that one for a few days now. Well, it's not just California that's having these problems. There is a city in Colorado, I think it's called Arveda, Colorado, where a utility company there, I think it was XL uh, is the name of the, yes, XL is the name of the company. Look at this, what they put out. They had to lock out 22,000 thermostats in 90 degree weather due to what they called an energy emergency. Now, it turns out uh, that the customer there, you know, they tried putting on their air conditioner a little bit uh, lower, and this alert came over saying energy emergency. They called the company to complain, and what the company says, hey, this is what you signed up for. You wanted a discount, and in terms of getting the discount, we uh, are allowed to regulate the thermostat to some degree, but I wonder how small that writing was right. when they signed that yeah. agreement, right? And that city happens to be run by a Democrat mayor. So, Guy, is there anything in common there, do you think, well, I with think the you officials in California? Read the fine print yeah. uh, when you're signing up for that kind of great deal. But I think it was interesting listening to you guys talking about California and tying it back to Gavin Newsom and the, and the stewardship there. Maybe it's a good thing that so many people are fleeing that state because then you have less demand on the power grid. <laughs> right. Like, like imagine, how, imagine how much worse it would be if there weren't thousands of Californians leaving and decamping for other states like Florida, Idaho, Colorado, Arizona. I mean, people keep voting Democratic in that state. I think a lot of the folks who don't want to put up with it anymore just leave. You know, I hear a lot on my daily show on radio from people in California. They call. There are a lot of conservative-minded people. And what I hear are the people who are stuck there as well. Yep. They have family reasons. Mm -hmm. They have their lives they've built. Look, I, I don't want to get rid of California. I want to reclaim California from the nutty liberal progressives. It's a beautiful state with immense resources. It needs better forestry management and more. But the people that call are stuck there. And they hate to see this. And if there's any chance of recovering California, it may be that wave that needs to come from inland out to the coast. Yeah, it, it's a tough thing to do because there are so many registered Democrats in the state of California. Oh, the numbers are ridiculous. And yeah. there, there, you know, there doesn't seem to be any viable Republican candidates for any office there at the moment. But you know, maybe that changes over time. Uh, but quickly, Guy, I mean, does this hurt Gavin Newsom politically if he tries to make a run for the White House, which it really seems like he's starting to lay the groundwork for? Oh, I think yeah. he absolutely wants to be president. I think he is looking at the polling that shows most Democrats don't want Joe Biden to run again, thinking, hey, maybe this could be me. He looks in the mirror every morning. He sees a president. Many politicians have that effect, right? <laughs> he <laughs> loves himself. I will tell you this of Gavin Newsom. No, for sure. And he, he wants to be president of the United States. And sometimes I close my eyes and I imagine a 2024 presidential election, hypothetically, where you have the governor of California and the governor of Florida. Let's have a referendum nationally on which model the American people want. I think that would end very badly for the Democrats. The last 15 seconds. Give it to you, Tom. Yeah, I would agree. I would just say this about Ron DeSantis, who Gavin Newsom goes after him on, on a daily basis because he is terrified of Ron DeSantis. He's not terrified of Trump. He's terrified of DeSantis. But I'll tell you this, they don't have rolling blackouts in Florida that I'm aware of. <laughs> I live in Florida. I haven't had a rolling blackout, a throttling back. And you know what? I'm nice and cool and my thermostat is not Yeah, I was going to say, your thermostat is probably a little bit lower. All right. Hey, Sean Hannity here. Hey, click here to subscribe to Fox News YouTube page and catch our hottest interviews and most compelling analysis. You will not get it anywhere else.